Welcome to the fourth and final TI Precision Labs lecture discussing isolated gate drivers. In this video, we'll summarize the common challenges faced by gate driver circuits and some of the features designed to solve these challenges. These challenges can be shared between isolated and non-isolated systems, but the impact on isolated gate drivers will be emphasized whenever it makes sense to do so. Sometimes the driver must be put into a muted state where the inputs no longer affect the outputs, and the outputs are clamped low. This could be during power sequencing, during microcontroller power on reset, or in the event of a fault. Many drivers include an enable or disable pin, which can be toggled to achieve this effect. Some drivers use differential signaling for added input noise robustness. But if the differential inputs are not required, the other input may be used as an enable or disable pin depending on the input polarity. Undervoltage lockout attempts to protect systems from harm by clamping outputs low if the control circuitry or the output drive circuitry does not have a sufficient voltage level. Non-isolated gate drivers may share a UVLO threshold for the control and the low side driver, with a separate element for any level shifted segment. For isolated drivers, the control circuit UVLO is usually low voltage, designed to detect a 3.3 volt or 5 volt supply. Depending on the type of transistor being driven and the system power and voltage levels, choice of output driver UVLO is usually split between three categories. 5 volt for logic level MOSFETs and low voltage synchronous rectifiers, 8 volts for common power MOSFETs, and 12 volts for IGBTs and silicon carbide transistors, which require high drive voltages. Occasionally, a negative rail UVLO will also be included. In a few drivers, UVLO is programmable. For the rest, manufacturers provide a single core driver, along with ordering options for internally set UVLO levels. Tripping UVLO usually deactivates the outputs in less than a microsecond, and unmutes control signals after power has been applied for tens of microseconds. This ensures that transients cannot accidentally activate the system, and that borderline supply voltages can easily trip the lockout if they start to droop any lower. Some drivers offer split structures for high and low outputs, allowing independent gate drive resistors for turn on and turn off. This option is common in IGBT systems where asymmetric turn-on and turn-off delays incentivize different gate drive strengths. Split outputs can also be emulated by using a parallel branch with a series diode, though this increases component count and loop area. During turn-off, a combination of high DVDT and nonlinear capacitance change can cause a large current to flow through CGD, the gate drain parasitic capacitance and CGS, the gate source parasitic capacitance, developing a voltage at the gate node between. The impedance from gate node to driver VSS can sometimes be large thanks to buffer circuits or gate resistors, and so the charge accumulating on CGS could cause a Miller-induced turn-on and bridge shoot-through. A Miller clamp is a large, low-impedance clamp designed to help drain the gate source capacitance during turn-off by bypassing any other circuitry with a hard clamp to VSS. IGBTs are susceptible to desaturation or shoot-through, and if this condition is prolonged, the transistors and the system could be damaged or destroyed. High-power IGBTs and the systems they drive can be extremely expensive, and fault conditions must be discovered and mitigated before permanent damage can be done. Desaturation detection circuitry checks the collector emitter voltage of the IGBT after turn on, and if the voltage rises above a predetermined threshold, such as during a short circuit condition, the IGBT is disabled and a fault signal is raised. The gate emitter voltage can be turned off quickly to prevent overcurrent damage, or slowly with a milliamp level constant current sink to prevent overvoltage damage from the high DIDT and parasitic lead inductance. DSAT detection and soft turnoff are standard protection features offered for high reliability isolated IGBT gate drivers today. The same concept can be used for silicon carbide MOSFET protection as well. A capacitor is used in combination with a current source to program a brief delay before the DSAT circuit begins monitoring 
to allow switch node transients to settle. A Schottky diode and resistor also ensure that the negative transient voltages do not damage the DSAT detection circuit. The detection speed needed to avoid damage to silicon carbide MOSFETs is usually only a few hundred nanoseconds, compared to a few microseconds for IGBTs. Care should be taken to determine if the DSAT circuit can respond quickly enough to protect the MOSFETs. Multi-channel isolated drivers have a functional isolation rating between the output channel circuits. This rating is usually limited by package geometry and pinout spacing. Sometimes, packages can be modified to enhance the creepage and clearance distance between high voltage pins by removing package pins and lead frame elements. Dead time control is normally handled by a microcontroller, which independently drives two or more PWM channels. In some cases, drivers may only have a single input, but this input controls two complementary outputs. In addition, the microcontroller dead time calculation could become corrupted by programming mistakes or errors, and inputs could be toggled unexpectedly by noise. A dead time circuit programs a minimum required duration for which both outputs remain off. The dead time circuit can prevent simultaneous firing of the outputs leading to shoot through, and set a consistent minimum dead time as a fallback in case of noise or programming errors. The dead time feature can be bypassed if unneeded. That concludes this video and the TI Precision Labs content on isolated gate drivers. Thank you for watching. Please try the quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.